Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we're gonna talk about Sean Roden and the reasons why he passed away. There were a few rumors circling around and we weren't really sure what to believe in but now we got Sean Roden's very close friend Stanimal opening up for Generation Iron YouTube channel and giving us more information exactly what happened in a year before the unfortunate event. Let's take a look at this video and let's see what Stanimal has to say. Sean passed away on November 5th. The Olympia was a few weeks earlier, so he traveled to the Olympia. And when he came back from the Olympia, he was very tired. That was kind of like the first sign. And then he went to see his daughter. When he came back, he had kind of like a cold or something. He was, you know, he had a hard time breathing. Actually, when I left for Chicago, he was supposed to meet, to meet me and my girlfriend. And as they were driving toward LA, they had to stop and go back home because he was feeling sick. That was his first um, heart attack that he ever had. Then that was 2020? Yeah, 2020. All right, so this was the case back in 2020, basically a year before he died, before he had the final heart attack. He had the first one a year before. So apparently Sean Roden wasn't all that healthy a whole year before he finally passed away. This is what he looked like back in that time. So you might assume that the reason he got a heart attack is because he was chasing a certain size, a certain weight, and he got really freaking big in the offseason. Even though he had no plans of competing, nothing was clear, he was still pushing the envelope. Whichever way, I'm, I'm sure he was doing a lot of food, really heavy training and probably a lot of gear. Whatever he was doing, you know, he, he ended up having a heart attack. So he wasn't very healthy a year before his death. Let's hear what else has Stanimal to say. Um, and then like a few weeks later, he had a, a severe heart attack that led him to the hospital. All right. So a few weeks after that first heart attack, he had another one, which was more severe and it led him to a hospital. So apparently things weren't very good at that time. He was not healthy at all two heart attacks, he should have done something severe, I mean, as far as downsizing, not pushing anything, you know, just taking it easy, because after having two consecutive heart attacks in a matter of a couple of weeks, he probably should have realized that he needs to stop everything if he wants to live. But apparently he didn't, and the result was him unfortunately dying. Yeah, so when he came back from the Olympia, he went to see his daughter, he came back, he was feeling sick, he had a hard time breathing, headaches, we were in the gym together, he trying to train, but he was not really feeling it. 2018, when he prepped for the Arnold, he had an ulcer too. Uh, he was running some errands, he came back home, because we, li we, lived, we lived together, we were sharing the same house. He asked for a glass of water, and he was not responding, so they, you know, pushed him and he just collapsed, and they called 911. Within maybe 10 or 15 minutes, they told us we could come and uh, that he actually, you know, he was uh, he was actually passed. And uh, it seems like his heart stopped working. Uh, but I don't think they've done an autopsy. As far as I know, I, uh, you know, I was talking with his brothers to have an update and it doesn't seem like they've done anything. So I, I thought they were going to do it anyway because he was only 46. But maybe something that needed to be requested or, any, or something like that. But when we went for his funerals... Uh, uh, November 25th, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, 27th. It was um, there was no news about like any type of autopsy or any any anything else. So, so there's no official cause of death. Is it was it a heart attack that he passed away from? I mean, that's what the doctor told us. They told us it's it's most likely his heart. Yeah, his heart stopped. All right, so that's about it. That's how Sean Roden died. He wasn't feeling well after the Mr. Olympia 2021. By the way, this is his uh, last uh, photo update. Uh, he wasn't feeling well. He asked for some water and that's about the time he passed away. He was rushed into the hospital, but it was too late. Uh, he, he died. So that's about it, basically. So you guys know now he had two heart attacks and a third one is the one that ended him and the, the, the autopsy wasn't done but the doctor told him that it was uh, his heart that failed he also had an ulcer so as you can see he wasn't all that healthy we didn't really notice while he was alive we thought he was perfectly well perfectly healthy but he wasn't so it was most likely as, as you can hear 
heart attack could have this been prevented if he gave up on bodybuilding and started living a much more healthier lifestyle maybe maybe not we will never know anyways i found this information i wanted to share it with you guys so there you go now you have it you guys remember this team i mean this was before the mr olympia 2018 when sean actually won the mr olympia he was trained by the psycho fitness lewis 21 that's his instagram ig uh, his name is chris lewis this guy on the right he's the coach or should I say trainer, because he's not like a guru, he wasn't telling him what to eat or what to take, but only he was helping him train. In the middle, in the background, you can see Stanimal as well. So this was a trio, this was a team, and these guys were pushing it all the time, every day. I was watching this entire prep, and uh, it was very motivating, and eventually Sean won the Mr. Olympia, so that was a hell of a year for bodybuilding, if you ask me. Anyways, I think... Part of the reason, one of the biggest reasons why Sean won that Mr. Olympia is because he was coached by this, this psycho. They were training like absolute maniacs. And what is interesting right now is that this guy is training Steve Kuklo for the Arnold Classic. So this might change the way I view Arnold Classic and who's gonna win it. Because, you know, Steve Google last year kind of failed, he didn't win a single show, he tried to win Texas, which is his home state, he failed, he was beaten by Ian Valier. Then later at the Arnold 2021, he improved, he came a little bit better, still wasn't very conditioned to win, he was almost second, but in the end, Ian Valier pushed him out, pushed him down to third, so he had those two shows, Texas second and Arnold Classic third wasn't enough for him to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, so it feels like Steve Kuklo is going to be hungry for this year's Arnold Classic. That's kind of what I felt when I saw this post of him, uh, he says that he's uh, 36 years old and that he's at the prime of his career and that he's ready to take on the 2022 Arnold and win that title, he says he will be ready. And he's 290 in this photo, in this video here. So guys, I mean, you don't forget, uh, Steve Kuklo is a really big man, and if he nails the conditioning, there's not gonna be a lot of guys who can stop him from winning that title, I mean, he is a great bodybuilder and now, trained by Psycho Fitness Lewis, I mean, training super hard, being motivated, doing everything that it takes, you know, he might place as high as second, I don't really see him beating Brandon Curry, I do think Steve is a great bodybuilder and if he comes in peeled and a little bit improved he can be really dangerous but I still feel like Brandon Curry is a different level, a different league of a bodybuilder but if everything goes very very well uh, I can see Steve cracking the top two like best case scenario and then maybe after that show he can win another Mr. Olympia qualifier and actually qualify for Mr. Olympia but to win the Arnold Classic you know against Brandon Brandon has to be really off for that to happen, so I don't really see him winning it, but I do see fire in him, I see motivation, I think he's very hungry and I think he's going to try his very best and I think the, the result is going to be amazing, but amazing enough to win the Arnold? I don't think so, whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. I might be wrong, statistically speaking I'm probably wrong, but I feel like Brad Wilkin can actually actually has bigger chances of actually beating Brandon Curry and winning the Arnold Classic. I know, I know, it's a crazy statement, but I just feel that way. Anyways, this is him at seven weeks out. So when I was making my previous video, I tried to include him here, and I and I said a couple of things, but I didn't really have a lot to say. I was looking at his photo and I was like, well, yeah, this is good for seven weeks out, he's lean enough, he's big enough, he's at that point where he's not completely shredded, he's not very full and big and round like he's in the off season. it's a transition period, he looks good and that's about it. So I didn't really have a lot to talk about, didn't even want to mention him here, but now, after seeing this photo, this comparison, well, I have a couple of things to say, so, as you can see, the left photo is 13 days out of Chicago Pro, and the right one is 6.5 weeks out of Arnold Classic. On the left photo, he's weighing 248, and on the right photo, he's 263. 15 pounds difference. Now, this does not mean that he added 15 pounds of muscle, no. 
apparently he is more conditioned on the foot on the left. You can especially see it in the glutes, you can see it in a chest. You can't really see it much in his stomach because I think the lighting is better on the right photo. You can see the abs more clearly, but you can still see the conditioning basically anywhere you look. So he was definitely in better shape 13 days out, of course, but let's just not even focus on the numbers. Look at the size difference. Look at how much thicker he is now. The size of the arms, the size of the just the neck and the head, like that area, the traps, the chest, the legs, everything, everything. He grew so much. I mean, look at how much his delts are popping now, and his chest, and his. And, I mean, both of his delts are just bigger. They're popping. They're more 3D. He definitely gained a lot of tissue, a lot of muscle. He gave us some ballpark numbers, he told us it was about 7 to 8 pounds of gains, and I see that, I can see, I think that's pretty reasonable, I think that's about it, but I don't think the numbers are really representing what is happening here. I think he basically, I think he transformed his physique. I think this is going to be a much, much better version of Brad Wilkin, and I can't wait to see him on stage, and I can't wait to see him place... I think at this point it is very safe to say that he is going to be in the top 3 at the, at the Arnold Classic, I can see that. Most likely top 2 and potentially he might even win the whole damn thing, the whole show. I mean he is... Uh, yeah, Brandon is better but Brandon has no legs. And Brad has amazing legs and they became just a little bit more amazing in this offseason. So we'll see what the end result is going to be but it looks very very promising at this point. Compare this to photos. He was huge last year at the Chicago and he looks like he got out of a hyperbolic time chamber. It doesn't look like it's only been a year or less. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it actually has been like half a year or something like that. So this is crazy how much muscle he gained. No wonder his voice is changing. He can't even speak because he gained so much muscle in his neck and his vocal cords thickened and everything in his body. I'm sure his organs are also enlarged and everything. I, I don't think this is very healthy, but it is what it is. He gained so much muscle, so much weight everywhere. And I, this weight that he has, it's probably some organ weight as well. But nonetheless, let's not even focus on the weight. Just focus on what you're seeing here. And you can see that he improved so much. And this is going to be a dangerous package at the Arnold Classic if all goes well. All right, then, as for the classic physique, uh, Arnold Classic, can this guy win that title, Ramon Dino? I can see him winning it. Yeah, sure, uh, for now, this is my favorite classic physique uh, at this Arnold Classic. I know Terrence Ruffin is better, he has more maturity and everything like that, but as far as the classic structure, the shape, uh, the wide shoulders, the height, the completeness, the really the pretty shape... This guy is definitely my favorite. So, I don't know, we'll see what, how he's gonna do, but at this point, at, at six and a half weeks or seven weeks out, he looks good. He definitely does look good. And I really like the fact that he is arm dominant, which is something you don't really see very often at the top in the classic physique. I mean, the, the Mr. Olympia winner, Chris Bumstead, also the runner-up uh, Terence Ruffin, fourth place finisher Urs Kalcinski. And this is the guy that is uh, fifth, but he has great arms. He has really good arms. He has great shoulders, great chest, great legs, uh, nice small waist, very, very aesthetic physique. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what kind of conditioning is he going to bring. Is he going to be improved? But, th but I think the last show he did, he looked much better than the Mr. Olympia. And I feel like he made some improvements. So I think he has a really good chance of actually getting that title. And I would love to see that. A tall guy with dominant arms. You know, that, that, I think that's what Classic Physique uh, should be all about. Well, we'll see in about six and a half weeks. It's getting close, guys, right? Arnold Classic is going to happen very soon. So stay tuned for more Arnold Classic updates and all kinds of bodybuilding videos. And for the best Arnold Classic coverage on YouTube. So guys, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.